short experimental based on earlier short design. And none of it was true. The amount of trying to stick Taxi across wind needs a little help. In the form of the SPAS volunteers. Ah, we've had a change in the programme, so running in from the left, ladies and gentlemen. A 1930s fighter formation. Sound coming from the nose is familiar. A good reason for that. Well, no chip, just touching down in the demon. Stone taking centre stage in the Gladiator. Interestingly, the year the Demon entered service, 1934, was when the, the year the Gladiator first flew. It was the last biplane fighter in the Royal Air Force Service, armed with four 303 machine guns, two, one on either side of the fuselage, firing down trays between the engine cylinders. As you can see in blisters under the lower wings. Double the firepower of a First World War fighter, but still not enough. Hence the reason why when the tender went out for a new fighter, the Air Ministry insisted on doubling it again to eight 303 machine guns. Interestingly, one of the first aircraft to feature a fully enclosed cockpit, certainly one of the first RAF fighters to feature an enemy aircraft. What are you looking at there, ladies and gentlemen? It was an actual Battle of Britain hurricane. A lovely thing it is to fall in the collection here. Beautiful thing it is to have the shiniest propeller on any aircraft I've ever seen. Nineteen ninety one and start of Operation Granby is start of the first Gulf War. The Royal Air Force's Tornado GR1 and GR4 Force has been on operations around the globe. Now, in from the right, this is Tornado! Instructing on the Hawk, moved on to the Harrier GR9, then on to the Tornado GR4 before joining the Marine Federation. Well, now. Yeah. 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 Six smokes come on as they go off to our right, having flown 
their aileron roles in the revolution. Directly ahead now to find red six seven. Cameras ready for the Jippo break. SE ah! was short experimental based on earlier short design. A lot of it was true. about the snow now, that really is very effective, isn't it? Oh, what's interesting about both these types of aircraft is they both stress to plus and minus 23 G. And the strength of the modern materials. Now that means the pilots have the most enormous confidence, so they're going to break my nose or not. John Hurrell in the Avro Anson. Put correctly at the Avro 19. That is the faithful Annie in Royal Apple Service, the Anson. The Avro 19 was developed as an airliner version of the design. Indeed, after the Second World War, a transport aircraft is very much worse. Incredibly reliable and very, very well liked by its crews. 